Hi, this is Rick Sorwitz. I'm in my studio and welcome to my YouTube channel, Rick Sorwitz Watercolor. At any time during the video, you can click on the link in the lower right hand corner to subscribe to my channel. And if you enjoy the video, be sure to like it and share it. And if you want to learn more about my online classes or see more of my YouTube videos, you can click on the links that appear at the end of the video. So this is the setup that I'll be using. I'm a drawing here. Uh, let's draw the big shapes and I'm going to be doing this rural farm scene and I'm going to keep it fairly simple dealing with big shapes and a range of values and we'll just go ahead and we'll get started right into this and I'm going to start with the sky. I'm not going to get too involved. I'm not trying to make this a cloud painting. Uh, I'm going to start with a little cerulean blue. I have a big wash brush. And uh, so there's some clouds as we look at the, at the reference photo. And you can see, uh, you know, a variety of uh, colors in here, some blues, some kind of gray tones on these clouds, um, and some just some soft shapes. And I'm gonna keep, keep these uh, shapes pretty soft as I paint this. And I'm working at about a 20 degree angle so gravity is going to be working with me. I add a little water to soften these edges. Sometimes I use a spray bottle, uh, but I don't want to get it that at that wet yet because I'm going to come back with some uh, some gray tones. And I'm going to uh, bring this wash down over here, leave some indication of some clouds touch of cloud or something here and I'm gonna stop I'm bringing this down to some of these trees that are in the foreground and I'm gonna leave that dry so the water so the moisture is uh, gonna stop right there but I'm gonna come down behind it in some of these distant trees and I'm gonna bring that wash all the way down to uh, the horizon line same here I'm going to go around this tree, around the, the silo, even though I got a little bit of water there. I'm going to pick that back up. I'm going to pick up this excess. Dry that. I'm going to blot out a little bit here. I want a, a little bit more of a, of a cloud shape. I'll soften that edge there too. And I'm going to bring this, keep bringing this wash down around the structure, around the roof. Now I'm gonna bring it down. I'm gonna paint over these distant trees because I'll be coming back into this wet and wet. And let's see, if get that there. Bring this around this tree in the foreground. And I'm gonna stop right there pick up a little moisture and uh, I'm gonna lift out a little bit in there and now I'm gonna take this is an eight round brush I'm gonna take some of that cerulean blue and I'm gonna take some orange this happens to be Halloween orange it doesn't really matter what orange you use but it's gonna gray that blue a little bit and I'm gonna use this for the some of these kind of shadowed areas of the clouds and some water soften that so give me the you know the suggestion of the bottoms of these clouds these are smaller and farther away and let's get a little bit more up here maybe Remember, the watercolor is going to dry lighter. Some more water. So I'm not going to do too much more of that. I don't want to get carried away. 
and I'm going to continue to pick up this extra moisture which gravity is bringing down. So now this is, is wet back here. It's, it's glossy. It's, it's a saturated paper. I'm going to take some sap green. I'm going to take some of this. This is royal blue. It's a dark blue. Let me get a little bit more out of there. Pink, there we go. So that's, you know, it's a dark green. Still a little bit more. There we go. It's a dark blue green, but it's a little too raw for me uh, in terms of a green. It's, a, it's not a natural looking color. So I'm going to take some alizarin crimson. I'm going to go across the color wheel and gray that down some. We'll get a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm going to take this, this round brush and I'm going to go around in the, in the distance. So this is going to go where I wet the paper. And be a soft edge in the distance. So I'm painting around uh, the trees that are in the foreground, around the buildings. And I'm going to drop some of that back here. But it's not going to go where the paper is dry. It's just going to follow the, uh, the moisture in the paper. So that will give me some distant trees. I'm also going to take, uh, I'm going to add a little bit of warm. It's too one dimensional for me, that color. So I'm going to warm it up a little bit and just suggest, you know, a little variation in what's going on back there. Maybe here where it's closer to us, a little lower. I'll drop some of this. Got a roof line there. I want to not paint over. So there's some darker, soft edges. So what I want to do right now is um, before I go much farther, I'm going to dry what I have there, pick up my extra moisture, and then I'll continue on. Okay, so this is dry, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, paint uh, some of these trees that we have in the foreground, some of the ground cover, and uh, some of this foreground area. So I'm going to start, this is a Hansa Yellow. Gamboge. Uh, this is permanent green. So I'm starting with a yellow green. I'm going to add a little quinacridone and gold to that. And I'm going to bring in some uh, sap green. So these are going to be much brighter. And I'm just going to drop these colors in here. This one overlaps the, the barn. I'm going to get a little more gold. Some of this can get a stronger green in this. Got this tree here.
And I have this one over here. So these are much brighter, this yellow green, much brighter than what I put in the background, which is cooler and more neutral. I might drag my brush a little bit, just give me some kind of broken edges here. And then I'm going to take a little of that sap green and I add a little pyro red to it. So it's just a little darker, a little more neutral. Okay, and now I'm going to go to a wash brush, a round wash brush, and I'm going to add some of this permanent green, and I'm going to pick up kind of what's going on here, a little grassy mound, and some of this. And that sap green. I'm going to add a little pyro red to that. Take that mixture, I'm going to go right along the, the leading edge of it, some spots. And take a little uh, royal blue. And add just some darker tones in there, some cooler notes. All right. So once again, I'm going to dry what I have, then I'm gonna I'm gonna come in and paint some of these other areas that are adjacent to this. If I go ahead and start to try and paint some of these edges, I'm gonna lose edges where I want harder edges, and I'm also gonna risk some backwash. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll dry this. But I actually might go just a little, take some alizarin crimson, with some of this sap green. I want to go just a little darker along here with a few spots, just a few. We'll drop that in now. Okay. Sometimes I splatter, I like splatter textures. I'm not gonna, I think I'm gonna do that too much. But I'm gonna add a little of that darker value, kind of in a shadow area of the tree. Here, a little bit up here. And we'll leave it at that. And I'm gonna go ahead and dry things. Okay, that's dry and I've cleaned my palette. And now I'm going to get a, a clean brush and I'm going to, I'm going to paint this, this foreground area here and these fields in the background. So I'm going to take uh, raw sienna. Over here I'm going to take a little ultramarine blue, some lizard crimson. Mix that in there, give me kind of a middle value reddish violet kind of grayed down but i'm going to add you know, a little gamboge to this so i'm going to start back here i'm going to drop in get a little smaller brush so this is a number six round brush i'm going to drop a little of this color back here for the field that's behind this uh, this series of structures. We'll just put that in over top and come back with a darker tone. And then back here. So we have a field 
of a field back there. I'm going to take a touch of green and go with this. Okay, so now I'm going to go to this large wash brush. A little more gambos, maybe a little Konak or Konakrin gold. Make sure I have enough pigment in this that it's rich enough. So we have this coming along the field. And you know, I'm just gonna I want to make some just some interesting patterns in here. I don't exactly like the care for the shape where the it's light up here and where it gets cut off very shallow. So I'm gonna bring some of these colors down here. And uh, I'm gonna take some of this red violet. Kind of a gray, red, violet. So big brush strokes, real loose. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to paint the the grass here, whatever this is, this dried up crop that's been cut. But I do want that a little, a little richer in color. So I'm going to get some more of the ultramarine blue, a little more alizarin. And wash my brush. Get some raw sand in that mixture. I could do some of this while it's. Uh, when it's dry, also if I want it, be a little more hard edged. But I think I'll keep it fairly soft edged. All right, once again, I'm going to dry this. And I want to dry that because now I'm going to be starting to work up here and I want to put my hand in what I've done there. And I don't want any of this to run into it. All right. So now I'm going to put a big wash over a lot of this, this barn structure. And um, I'm going to start with this uh, raw sienna. And I'll add a little lizard crimson to it. And I, and I use some of this here too, this red violet that I have. So I'm going to start painting over this and some of this is eventually going to have a you know a darker sh darker value some of it's going to be in shadow some of it's not now a little more red to this a little more lizard and crimson So I'm painting this you know, as one large shape, a lot of this. And I'll be uh, glazing over some of the shadowed areas. Throw a little of that in there now. around
So working around this building, and it's like where the part where that roof extends out has a pole holding it up. Now we'll work in here. So, you know, a lot, just, just one big shape is how I treated that. <clears throat> and I've had some, you know, I have some cool colors, some warmer colors as it moves through there. And uh, then I'll, I'll start to glaze over for some of the shadows and some of the darker areas. And um, let me go ahead. I'm going to dry this again. Then I'm going to, I'm going to paint the, the rooftops and some of these other areas. Okay, well that, that's dry. And while I still have these colors here, I'm going to uh, paint some of the shadowed areas. So I'm going to take some more of this ultramarine blue and alizarin and some of the raw sienna. Actually, I'm going to take a little burnt orange, add to this mixture. Okay, so I've got a variety of colors. When I paint some of these shapes, I don't I don't like to just create outlines. And I like to interrupt the lines and the shapes. Get a little more blue in my mixture here. here. So this is a six round brush that I'm using. And let's see, I see an area there where I should have painted. So I'm going to go ahead and get that right now. Here. I'll paint over that and I'll come back and, and put in the doors later. So this is a shadowed side. And we'll go under the roof. I'm going to come over here. Painting around the tree, but the shadowed side of the building. And a little bit under here. If we can see how I'm building up layers of value. And I think. Take a little, a little ultramarine. I'm gonna take just a, a dark value here, and I'm gonna paint in some tree trunks. These are pretty simple trees. I'm not getting real involved in what's going on there. Just to suggest, you know, these big kind of bushy trees with, you know, with tops on them. And let's see. I want to paint in. I think 
this is dark or dry and it's nah, still not dry enough but those in and I want to put the shadow right here go under here This is the building back here that we see. I'm going to take some royal blue, some dark valued blue. I'm actually going to put a little of that in here, get a little darker. And I'm going to paint these doorways here. And I'll glaze over that. Right. So now once again, I want to dry things and I'll continue on. All right, so that's dry and I'm gonna Take more neutral, darker middle value of this mixture. And I want to uh, get some of this red. I'm gonna paint more of the, the shadow side of this so it's a little more evident. So differentiate that a little bit and let's see we've got sign up you know some areas here where the boards end I'm going to show those Again, I want to want to dry things. I'm going to paint these rooftops and this building with some shadows. Okay, so I clean my palette. Now I'm going to take some cerulean blue, and I'm going to take a little of my orange, this Halloween orange. I'm going to make a gray. And I'm going to glaze over, well, maybe a little more blue in some of that. So we get the, the, all these rooftops. I'm not just going to paint them solid. I'm going to leave little breaks where some of that, some of the paper is showing through. Take a little something on a glaze over this post that's out there. Okay. Now I'm going to paint this rooftop. We'll add a little more of the orange in some of it so it's have a little more warm and cool.
and glaze over these areas here, tone these whites down. And here. I've got this rooftop. And I want to dry that and I'm going to put a shadow over the underneath the roof line there, but I want to, I need a, a, a good edge on it. Now we'll add a little bit to this silo. Okay, once again, I need to dry it so I have some hard edges here when I, when I put my paint on. Okay, so now I'm going to take a little more cerulean blue and some of this orange. Gonna go underneath the the rooftop here with a shadow over that. I'm gonna go a little stronger. Let me get some. This is burnt orange. This is royal blue. Mix those together, and I'm gonna put the kind of the shadow side of this. Uh, silo but plus add a little bit of line to it just to help show the contour of that take just a little bit of a middle value of this mixture I've been using to help show this intersection of the roof just a little bit now I'm going to take this royal blue and some of this burnt orange to give me a, a good dark. I'm going to paint a few of these dark values in a few places here. These, these doorways or windows, whatever they are. Put a little darker under here. Darker in this shadow, perhaps. You can see those darker values now. I'm going to go okay there. A little darker here. dry this. Okay, that's dry. <coughs> I'm going to take uh, a little of this raw sienna and the lizard and crimson. Take a little of this blue, just a, this mixture I have just to grade it down. I'm going to take just a, a little bit of this. I'm going to take the, some of that moisture off my brush. But I'm just going to drag down Get a little text texture. I'm gonna start here and come up. I want to make sure I go to both edges. Drag down here and up. I don't want to go too crazy with this. Just a little texture. I'll get a little bit here so it fits in. Okay. And. That's where, where I'll stop. So I tried to keep this simple. It's a, just a simple little farm scene with you know a barn, but I didn't use barn red paint. I used you know, a mixture of paints, warm and cool. And uh, to paint this little scene, didn't get too crazy with the clouds or anything like here. It kept it soft and in the distance. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, enjoy your painting.